Hello and welcome. In this video, we'll take the skills learned in the previous videos to build a function that can compute the nth row of Pascal's triangle. Starting with the function declaration, we'll set the output of the function to be lowercase p, which will represent the nth row of Pascal's triangle, as well as uppercase p, representing Pascal's triangle up to the nth row. We'll call the function Pascal's and give it one user-specified input, n. It may help to recall some basic information regarding Pascal's triangle. Pascal's triangle is an array of the binomial coefficients such that any element in the triangle is equal to the sum of the two elements directly above it. Among the many uses is the ability to quickly determine the coefficients of an nth order binomial expansion. For example, the binomial x plus y raised to the fourth power is expanded and has coefficients 1, 4, 6, 4, 1, corresponding to the fifth row of Pascal's triangle. There are many ways to code this function, but in our case it's helpful to align Pascal's triangle into a right triangle so it's more conducive to coding in MATLAB. Back in our main code, we can start by defining an n by n matrix of zeros as defined by the user input value n. Since the first and second rows of Pascal's triangle are always the same, it's simple enough to define them on a case-by-case -case basis. In other words, we can use an if statement to do different things based on the user input. For instance, imagine that the user has an input value of 1, then right away a one-by-one one matrix of zeros would be produced. Then we can say if n equals 1, then p of 1, 1, or the first element in the matrix p, is equal to 1, simply making the output equal to 1, which is indeed the first row of Pascal's triangle. Now if n happened to be 2, then a 2 by 2 matrix of zeros would first be produced, and we would enter this else if statement, setting the 1, 1 element and the entire second row of big P equal to 1. Then at the end of the if statement, we can set the final row of big P to be equal to small p, which just represents the nth row of Pascal's triangle. Let's test this function for values of n equal 1 and 2. While we can see that the function works for n equals 1 and 2, it's not very useful. What we need now is an else condition within our if statement that accounts for all values of n greater than 2. So, else, then we can quickly account for the first two rows by setting the 1, 1 element of big P to 1, and setting the second row, first and second columns of p, equal to 1. Then what we want to do is to use iteration to compute the third through nth rows of the triangle. So for some index representing rows is equal to 3 through n, we can set the first term in the rth row equal to 1, since the first term in every row of Pascal's triangle is 1. We can also set the last term in the rth row of Pascal's triangle to 1, since the last term in every row of Pascal's triangle is equal to 1. In the middle, we can nest another for loop that will compute the second through second to last column of the rth row. This can be done because we know the property that each element in Pascal's triangle is equal to the sum of the two elements above it. So, the r seeth element of big P should be equal to the r minus 1 c minus 1 element of big P plus the r minus 1 seeth element of P. Those represent the two elements in the row above it. Remember that this is all within the else condition, which accounts for all values of n greater than 2. Now we can end the loop and we can test the function. Let's just make sure that everything still works for n equals 1 and 2 first. Now let's try n equals 3, which should enter the else portion of the statement since n is neither 1 nor 2. 
Using left-handed arguments to request both of our outputs defined in our function declaration, we see both the third row of Pascal's triangle and the square matrix representation of Pascal's triangle up to the third row. If our code is correct, we should be able to ask for any row of Pascal's triangle now and view just the nth row or both the nth row and the entire Pascal's triangle up until the nth row. In this example, we combine several ideas that we've learned over the past few videos, including matrix operations, conditional statements, and function. So I hope this was a challenging yet clearly explained sample of how several concepts can be combined to produce a useful function.